Chào mọi người, hiện tại mình đang có mặt tại hai show Sài Gòn 2024 cùng với đại diện giám đốc kinh doanh quốc tế của Sunyata, Will Klein Và hôm nay chúng ta sẽ cùng đặt nhiều câu hỏi về Sunyata từ dây dẫn cho đến những cái lọc nguồn nổi tiếng của hãng Hi Mr. Will, nice to meet you So obviously I'm a big fan of Shunyata products and your designing efforts because there's also a lot of sign patterns, measurements and also listening, the heart emotion as well. So in the last few years we saw Shunyata release whole new of different line of products, especially for cables. There's uh, entry levels, Theta and Gamma. There's also the new like I would say reference level like the Alpha X and the Sigma X, right? So I was wondering why you replace almost the whole new cable lineup, except for the flagship Omega, of course. So, is there any reason behind that for you guys to replace all the cables? Sure. Lots of reasons. When it comes down to it, when we were looking to redevelop the Gamma and Theta series, all right, so just the two entry level families that we do, we actually realized that with the new material science that we're using, the new technologies we're implementing, and especially a couple of the processes that have improved significantly, we actually wound up with a product that was so superior to its predecessor that it wound up being entirely too close to the, to the, the members of the family that were up the chain. So it kind of forced us to reimagine the entire line because of the quality differential as we go up from family to family. Uh, long story short, the Gamma and Theta were so good, we had to replace everything else. <laughs> the second question for me to you is from the Theta and Gamma itself. They will replace the Venoms and the Delta, right? They are obviously very beloved for their sound characteristic, price performing, everything, this is the whole package for the music lover as well. So I was wondering, what is the new technology and science behind of the Theta and the Gamma compared to the previous level to bring it to like performance so good like that? Sure. So I think there's a few things that we can talk about in terms of what technologies were used to significantly improve our entry level series. But I think it's also really important to note that when we're looking at creating a product, there are many different aspects that go into that product. We can look at the purity of the copper, the conductors that we're using, the dielectrics that we're using, the process for rendering these things, the geometry of the cable, the connectors that we use, the method by which we attach those connectors. All of these things will play a role in the final product. And I think what's most important about designing a product like this, especially when we're trying to make it at an accessible price point is making sure that we line up all of those ingredients in such a manner that we're getting a perfect recipe. Now that said, two of the major improvements that we've made going from our original entry level series to our new Gamma and Theta is one, the new KPIP V2 process. Right, so KPIP stands for Kinetic Phase Inversion Process. And essentially, our lead designer, Kalen, has developed a way to use pulses of current to give us many of the same advantages that we get from using a cryogenic process, which is to essentially relieve the tensions in the molecular structure of the conductors that we're using. So this process is not only giving us the advantages that we once coveted from cryogenic process treatment, but it also reduces or completely eliminates the need for any break-in of the cable over time. For the next question, I want to move up the level a little bit because the Alpha and the Sigma V2s is already loved by many music lovers, audio file critics, and a lot of like audio reviewers from big magazines, they also use the Sigma Alpha V2, and they love it. And why do you guys have to introduce like, that new technology, that whole new concept of Type C, you know, third generation of the noise uh, reduction, and also a lot more else, PMZ, the whole, there's a lot of more like synonym <laughs> on that matter. So can you break it down? Is, what is the improvement, especially for the power cables, what is the new improvement over from the Alpha X and Sigma S over the, the V2, the previous version? Yeah, so what we're seeing is not only have we improved the materials, the architecture of the cable or the geometry of the cable, um, but also 
the process of the KPIP, like I said, the uh, kinetic phase inversion process for all of the entire line now has been significantly improved and that made a major, major improvement. But what we're actually seeing in the alpha X compared to the V2 and the sigma X compared to the V2 is a borrowing of technology from the omega. So now we're actually stepping down some of the things like the C mode, common mode rejection noise reduction technology, uh, the tap technology, actually trickling down to the more accessible lines. All right? So where we had those particular technologies that were only accessible at the very top of our line, now they've become more accessible throughout the line. And, like I said earlier, one of the biggest reasons, the biggest motivations for upgrading our entire family of products is the improvements that we made on the entry level. We've gotten so close in terms of overall performance quality that we had to improve the Alpha and Sigma as well as we moved up. And so, Mr. Wu, I will talk about your new products, uh, new products as well for Shinyada, especially going to the grounding concept, a very like controversial topic for audio file because, like, for, especially from Shinyada, you guys have science backing up everything. So I was wondering, what is the science backing up for the Antera, a grounding unit that also won the Absolute Sound product of the year? Yeah, we were absolutely elated to receive that award recently, but it makes sense. When we talk about grounding, um, what I've noticed is from region to region, there's different levels of uh, acceptance of this particular type of uh, category and uh, uh, different levels of knowledge that people have about how it works, why it works, or if it works at all. But when we talk about grounding an audio system, the advantages that we get are simply based on the fact that every single one of these chassis has its own relative voltage, right? and that voltage potential can be a matter of electromagnetic and radio frequency interference being absorbed into the chassis from the outside world, but more often is a matter of the internal power supplies creating electromagnetic fields that is then absorbed by the chassis. Right? So each of the chassis in a given audio system is going to have a slight voltage variance, and unfortunately, because we have all of these different chassis connected to each other through very sensitive signal cables and digital cables, ethernet cables and speaker cables, all of which are carrying signals. Right? The last thing we want is to be pumping noisy voltage that doesn't belong as part of the signal through the signal cables. So all the Altera doing is all the Altera is doing quite simply is making sure that we have a path of least resistance from each of the chassis in your system out of the system without having to go through those delicate signal cables. Add to that, and I think the reason that of all the grounding devices out there, Altera is simply superior, is we've got our proprietary noise reduction technology built in. So not only are we extracting the noise from the chassis, extracting that additional voltage from the chassis, but we're also conditioning the noise out of it, extracting the noise from it, and making sure that it has the path of least resistance out of the system. And so we talk about noise reduction, I will talk a little bit about the most beloved product from Shenyada from the Audio 5 Vietnam. I think it's a power conditioner and distributor for Shenyada, especially something like flagship level like the Everest 8000 like that, or the Eager, the Denalis. It's also made a name and you know, followings in Vietnam. And so I was wondering, how can um, Shenyada can achieve that black background, no noise, everything, while maintaining the dynamic range of a system like that, especially not when I talk about power conditioner, there's not a lot of things in the world right now that can maintain the dynamic range of a system without like sucking the music out. <laughs> I couldn't agree more or have said it better. And, and we happen to be standing right in front of the Everest power conditioner, or power distributor as we like to call them, which I believe to be the world's very best. And the reason it is so good is because there are no less than nine patented technologies implemented into this. All right, so there is no way for anybody to be able to copy exactly what we're doing in the Everest. Not only are we using component to component interference technology, we're using our noise harvesting and noise reduction technology. We're of course making sure that we adhere the absolute best in DTCD, dynamic transient current delivery. What we have actually found to be the most important measurement in making sure that we're properly delivering power to your sound system. Add to that, we've got a great grounding system built into 
to this that also has noise reduction technology built into that. We've got separation of multiple different zones, so all of your components can work together without actually sending noise to each other, which tends to be one of the biggest problems in most of the quote unquote power conditioners out there on the market. Um, so when we look at something like the Everest, this really represents the non-plus ultra of being able to deliver current as quickly as possible, as necessary to each component without any of the radio frequency, electromagnetic, or component to component noise that so often pollutes a good sound system. So this is more a technical question for you. So the, especially from Chunyata, especially something like the Everest, all inside is, is a passive technology. There's nothing active inside, but how, so how can you achieve that nose noise and that dynamic range? So without getting too technical, most of the technologies that we're implementing in something like the Everest in order to deliver us uh, the, the fastest current that we possibly can, reduce noise as much as we can, reduce component-to-component -component interference, and electromagnetic and, and radio frequency interference, it's all actually happening through the field of electricity rather than through the current of electricity itself. So with our technologies, we need not interfere with the direct conductivity or direct pathways that the electricity travels upon, we can actually manipulate the field around the conductors to achieve all of these different things. And I'd be remiss if I did not mention one of the biggest, if Shunyata has one secret weapon, it is certainly built into the Everest, it's also built into the Denali and the Typhon and any of our QR power cables is called QRBB. All right? QRBB is a quantum reserve. What we're doing here is we're actually creating a Coulomb charge that allows there to be more electricity available than can possibly get through the cable itself. So as each one of these components is opening and closing, allowing a portion of the electrical sine wave into the power supply on the unit, QRBB allows there to be an overage of energy that is already there waiting to be absorbed by that power supply. So that is one of the most effective end things that really sets us apart from all of the other power distributors and power cable companies out there. There is no one that has QRBB besides Shunyata, we've patented it. So, and lastly, I want to talk, is there any new products on the horizon that we have to know about? Can you share a little bit? Well, you, if I told you about the new products, I wouldn't be able to leave here without having <laughs> killed you, sir. But no, uh, we're always working on things. And when we talk about our cable technology, I think having updated all of the families in our product categories, uh, we're probably not going to see any major changeovers in terms of cables, but there's still different categories that we're looking at. You know, we don't actually make um, a dedicated balanced phono cable, for instance. Uh, there's some other accessory type cables that we might be looking into and doing some experiment with. But one of the things about Shinyata is if we cannot develop a better way to do it, we're not going to do it at all. Right? We don't have any Me Too products. We're not just trying to fill in different categories just to put our label on something. If we can't use our proprietary technologies and techniques to make a significant improvement, a world-changing improvement in that particular category, then there's no point for us to get into it at all. all right? So there's certain things that we're never going to touch. All that said, I would love to see us to continue to expand our overall lineup, both at the top and the bottom. Um, so expect some, some, some new products coming from us over the next uh, year or two. Uh, but uh, you know, nothing I can really talk about right now. And thank you so much for the interview. Uh, it's absolutely well, my pleasure. You, thank you. Thank you. I will hope to, to meet you someday and have you have a good trip in Vietnam and this high-end show. Uh, honestly, I've loved my time here in Vietnam. I appreciate the hospitality. Thank you.